Okay, hopefully everybody can see me and hear me, because tonight, as, as most people know, I'm in San Diego, California, actually Carlsbad, and we are having a tropical storm. Last few hours hasn't been so bad, but it's really picking up right now. So um, I was going to go down to the ocean. In fact, I might, after I get this video done, go down and look and see what the waves look like. But I'll just kind of go behind me a little bit. You can kind of see. I want to stay out of the street because it's raining pretty hard. And um, I don't want to get my, my phone wet. And I don't want to get wet either. You can see that people are putting up. Actually, I'll show you where some people have put up some sandbags right behind me. If you can kind of see behind me, there's some sandbags right there. So people are, they, they prepared a little bit, but they didn't prepare very much. But then again, you don't really get bad weather out here. I mean, this is a tropical storm. And it's, I guess it's supposed to be one of the worst they've ever had. But in all honesty, it's probably, for most people that live anyplace else in the world, this is probably pretty mild stuff. I'm going to see if I can catch here. You can see how much the rain's coming down. I can see if you can see that. There's a person coming through with their headlights. And you can kind of see, you can see it's, it's coming down pretty hard. If I was not underneath the awning of these businesses, I would be getting drenched right now. And the wind's starting to pick up. Up until this time, there hasn't been hardly any wind. So yeah, it's starting to pick up a little bit. But like I say, I grew up in western Nebraska. We used to have thunderstorms come through. And what we're dealing with tonight, this would, be, this would have been nothing for us to deal with, you know, almost every week in Nebraska. You know, the only difference of this one is it's, it is sustained. You know, it's like you got a, a, thunder, a, storm, a thunderstorm blast come through and you got an hour's worth of bad weather and then it clears up. It's been going on this way almost all day and it's been picking up as the day's been going on. So I would imagine by tomorrow morning you're going to see some, some flooding because it's been raining like this all day and now it's starting to blow pretty hard too. So you can see the sheets of rain coming down behind me. But this isn't really a weather video. It's just I wanted to do it during the, this weather because it's such a rare event. So I want to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and the re recent Bitcoin price drive because uh, Bitcoin was around 31,000 and now I think it's, it's getting close to 25,000. And uh, everybody, after BlackRock and Larry, Fine, Larry Fink um, said that they were going to start maybe do an ETF, Bitcoin ETF, and he was starting to get a lot, little more interested in uh, Bitcoin and said Bitcoin is the future. And he's a man, he's been saying a lot of stuff about how great Bitcoin is and then the price drops. That's usually a pretty good indicator that the price is gonna drop. When you have somebody like Larry Fink coming out and being very positive about Bitcoin, you better figure the price is gonna drop. And I knew the price was gonna drop when I heard Mike Novogratz come out and say, oh, buy Bitcoin now, buy Bitcoin now. Because I know Novogratz. Uh, Novogratz is one of the guys that outfound EOS. So if that doesn't tell you uh, who, who, anything about Novogratz, nothing will. So he's the billionaire, that I think, that put up some of the money or started, put up some of the money to start the EOS um, blockchain. We all know what's going on with EOS. In fact, EOS right now is down as low as it's ever been. I just, I saw, I don't even look at the price too much anymore, but we're looking at like around 50 cents, um, which I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that the blockchain operates. We're operating on it. We've got Challenge operating on it. Uh, you know, they still have a waiver from the uh, Security and Exchange Commission. Um, it's just a bad time. You know, I knew when the NF stepped into the, the blockchain at the time they stepped into it, they had, they had their work cut out for them. You just don't take $4 billion, run off with it, and then expect the blockchain to, you know, have an easy, ha have an easy go of it and recover quickly because it's just not going to. So, yeah, I mean, I believe in those guys. They're going to continue to plug away. But, you know, they had a big $4, $4 billion hole to dig out of, and they've been digging out of it as well as they can. But yeah, the price is at all-time lows for EOS. I never, ever dreamt in my life I'd see EOS around 50 cents. But it is. It's getting pretty close there. And I never thought there'd be a time where I would say not to buy Bitcoin. But I wouldn't even buy any Bitcoin right now. Because I think what's going on with Bitcoin is you got a guy like uh, Larry Fink. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he's, 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 the, he's the person, the CEO of BlackRock. BlackRock has their hands in everything. You know, it's an investment fund and they, and they pretty much own everything they own an incredible amount of stuff google and you know tesla and all these major corporations got they have big interests in all these companies um huge interests so blackrock is just a major player so larry fink 
says that he's interested in Bitcoin, and I think he is. But I think what they're doing right now is they're driving the price of Bitcoin down because that affects the miners. So there's a break-even point on, on Bitcoin. So when you drive Bitcoin down so far, it takes electricity to mine Bitcoin. So if you're running a mining operation, a mining rig, and now you got to pay for the electricity, you got to break even. And I think the break even is probably around $24,000, $25,000. So there's these mid-level miners are going to start having to either sell Bitcoin or they're probably, um, you know, they're going to have to do something. They're, they'll probably make some sort of a decision. And I think, I think a guy like Fink could be trying to acquire mining operations, mining rigs, and maybe this is a good time to do it. Because those guys don't play unless they have control over the game. And, you know, they're going to get more control over Bitcoin before they start investing their, their billions and trillions of dollars into it. And the way they're going to do it is they're going to get control of the, the mining and they're going to get control of more of the, uh, the available Bitcoin. Because a lot of Bitcoin's held in very strong hands. People that own it, that they'll never sell it because they have, they're such strong believers. And especially if you bought it from, you know, in the, in, since, you know, way back in 2012, 13, 14, in those years, you've got an incredible appreciation. So they're never going to sell it. But the people that might have to sell are those that are making a living out of it by running, um, by mining. Those are the people that I think they're trying to get to liquidate Bitcoin. Because if you're a miner, it's a business. You know, you, gotta, you have input and then you have to, you take your, your expenses or your living expenses out of what you get from selling a Bitcoin or making what you, what you make in a, by creating a Bitcoin with the mining, with operation of the computing, the hardware, and then the electricity. And then whatever's left over, that's what you get to keep. And you know what? If you start going into a negative, then you have to start selling Bitcoin or you have to, you know, do something. But I think they're going to try to get the, these mid-level miners to liquidate their Bitcoin because of the fact that they're going to be running, um, running at a negative with this Bitcoin price at this price. It's, it's, it's probably less than break even for it. But, you know, not everybody has the same input costs. I mean, if you're uh, being subsidized or if you're in a place where there's cheap electricity, you're going to be able to hang on longer than a place where, you know, it's a little bit different. So these mid-level uh, mining operations running at about $25,000, $26,000, they're going to start liquidating Bitcoin. A guy like Larry Fink is going to be there buying it. And it's going to, then when they get a strong enough position, well, then they'll, start, they'll allow the, the Bitcoin to come back up. What that position is, I don't know. I would say is a good chance we could go below 20000 on Bitcoin. So very good chance we could go below 20000 But keep this in mind. There's the halving coming up next year, very early, April, May. So between now and next April, this price is going to recover. Because when they have the amount of rewards that Bitcoin miners earn, that's going to make the price go up no matter what, just because of supply and demand. Because all of a sudden, there's going to be less, less demand for even the miners. Or there's going to be less supply for even the miners. There's going to be more demand and less supply because the fact the rewards go down with the algorithm every four years, the, 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 uh, it goes in half. So between now and April, that price is going to turn around. And if you can make, it, make that call, I think you'll do very well because I think Probably going to drop down around mid 20s, low 20s, maybe even in the higher teens, 17, 18, 19,000. And then I think you're going to see 100K. You'll probably see 100K sometime next year in 2024. So it's going to go back down to 19, 18, it's probably as low as it's going to go. Be some support there. And then you're going to see this thing run back up at about to around 75, 80 to $100,000 uh, sometime next year, probably after the halving takes place. Having will probably take place next March or April. Probably more likely the latter part of April will start to take place. So at that point, you'll see the demand for Bitcoin go up much, much higher. Uh, supply be, be cut in half. And you're going to see the price go up. So if you can hang on through this next few months and let Fink run his game, uh, taking out some of these Bitcoin uh, miners and, and making them liquidate their, their Bitcoin, I think you got a pretty good play with Bitcoin. So... I think this is the time that you just need to be sitting on the sidelines and waiting for the proper time to jump in. And as far as EOS is concerned, I don't know what's going on with EOS. 
I don't follow it that close because there's not that much information, not that much news coming out on it right now. All I know is the price is bad and they got to get it turned around. Until they get it turned around, um, you know, and, and, and nobody buys, nobody sells, nobody does anything. You know, and it's all based on the, sh the, the token price. If the token price is doing well, people will buy. If the token price is, you know, and regardless of the news, the price has got to come up. And right now, with all the with all the government intervention and, 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 and all the regulators trying to be involved, the U.S. has got a, a great opportunity to take advantage of that, where the supply or the, the, the amount of coins out there right now is, 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 is been decreased to where there's only a few right now that are viable, um, you know. So the U.S. has got a chance to be one of those few that, that come out of the other side of all this regulation and Security and Exchange Commission and all the stuff that they're throwing at them because of the waiver that they got clear back in, I can't remember when they got it, but they got it quite a few years ago. So anyway, kind of an interesting time. I'll be putting up some more videos, AI videos. Uh, if you see any of my videos and it's like, talks about uh, lighting, LED lighting, or talks about Kratom, those are, those are the two e-commerce videos, I uh, uh, channels I run. I put a videos on this channel every now and then just to help support what I'm doing. So that's all those are if you see those. There's a gust coming through right now, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see this. I hope the video picks this up. Because like, this is pretty serious, probably since I've been out here. I'm going to see if I can get down to the ocean. I might try to shoot another video. I won't do much talking, but I'll go down to the ocean and see if I can shoot a video so you can see the waves. I appreciate you watching.